The 2019 Corruption Perception Index published by Transparency International is out and Nigeria has been named the fourth most corrupt West African nation. Plus, Nigeria is to be added to a list of countries placed on American visa restriction. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome. Now, despite President Muhammad Buhari's anti-corruption fight, Nigeria has been named the fourth most corrupt nation in West Africa by Transparency International. According to the report, Nigeria is now ranked 146 out of the 180 countries considered. While reacting to the report, Nigeria's Attorney General and Justice Minister Abubakar Milami stated that the facts on the ground do not correlate with the information released by Transparency International. Joining us to have a conversation on this are two gentlemen. Two gentlemen, I beg your pardon. Legal practitioner Kristen Wogu, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. And of course, we have Ugochuku Ikako, political analyst. Pleasure to have you join us as well. Another one for us. Before we start this conversation, let's just uh, take a quick look at the press briefing um, announcing this. In the country comparison, Nigeria ranks this year 146 out of 180 countries. Two places down compared to 2018 results. The Corruption Perception Index aggregates data from a number of different sources that provide perception by business community and country as part of the level of corruption in public sector. Instead of analytically discussing why Nigeria does not seem to be winning the war on corruption, the government and her supporters will spend taxpayers' money, resources, and precious time on denying the obvious. Nigeria does not make much progress in the fight against corruption. There must be increased transparency and accountability in the management and use of recovered assets. The rule of law must be upheld in the fight against corruption. Non-state actors may be allowed to write to enjoy freedom of expression and speak out without intimidation or harassment. We wish to integrate our call to Mr. President to immediately initiate comprehensive electoral reform to restore the trust of citizens in democracy. Furthermore, judicial corruption must be confronted you know, head on. There is also an urgent need to pursue and press on with security sector reform to stamp out corruption in the country security sector. Lastly, economic reform in the extractive sector has to be pursued without further delay or excuses. Let's start with what is before us, another corruption index. Just two years ago, we climbed four places. We've dropped fourth in West Africa, 146 in 180 countries. Let me start with your reaction first. Uh, let me start with you, Wogu. Okay. Um, well, I don't know what we expect, but I'm not disappointed. We... Uh, I know somebody would want to do politics with um, the index, but the reality on ground is that Nigeria is a breeding ground for corrupt people from different um, levels. So we, everything, the uh, public service, infrastructure, unemployment, security, Everything just throwing corruption on the face of Nigeria and Nigeria. But this government has been fighting, and when there, there was a drop, you know, there was commendation. Doesn't it, let me come to you, Guchku, doesn't it surprise you, considering that there was some stride just two years back, and now we're here again? Well, I think it doesn't surprise me. And uh, I think part of, part of what we saw when uh, President Buhari came in, there was a sort of body language. Because people felt that, okay, uh, because of the campaign, that's a uh, 2015 uh, election, 
people feel that okay, this this government might be a little bit different. It was, it was more of a perception thing. It wasn't that corrupt, corrupt activities weren't, weren't going on across all sectors, across all facets of public office. It wasn't like even so. These things were happening, but at that time there was a perception that this government is fighting corruption. All right, sorry to interrupt you. Oh, we'll just go on a quick break, and uh, when we come back, we'll, we'll, please don't forget to your thought to go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue the conversation here. Just stay with us. Get to know you're still with us, my guests are still here. Just to continue uh, with your thoughts earlier, what's your take on this? Does it surprise you? It doesn't surprise me. And the basis of the fact is that um, during the first administration of President uh, Muhammad Buhari, we saw what happened with the NEMA fund. We saw what happened when his uh, former SGF was accused of looting funds that was meant for the IDPs. So these are things that has happened over a long period of time, and we've had accusation about uh, the president who has said something about looting. Uh, there have been allegations leveled against Lai Mohammed of looting funds within his within his own ministry. So it doesn't surprise me. What I knew was from, from the very beginning is that President Buhari had the wonderful campaign around surrounding anti-corruption because of his personality. So at that time, because of his perception, some people felt that okay, this corruption has gone down to a minimal level. That could have been better, but there was no institutional there was no institutionalized effort to curb corruption on their own part. So apart from apart from what they continue from the TSS, that from the uh, the Gulag administration, there was nothing aside that apart from his own personality. And people, st when people start saying things that okay, you are not here, things are not being done well. But would that be fair to say it's just his personality? Because we did see the EFCC recover huge amounts of money. We had the ivory tower, we had the uh, minor, minor gate, we had the Alison Madweke, we had so Alice, many. Alison is still fine. She's not in the EFCC net. So you see, a, a, lot, a lot of what EFCC did. Um, a lot has to do with propaganda. A lot has to do with campaign of saying things that they do. And we've seen how serious countries fight fight issues around corruption. I keep saying it. When EFCC was trying, former governor of Delta State, James Ibori, they had close to more than 50 count charges. It's impossible to nail someone on that. The, the, the moment his case went to UK, they nailed him on a four count charge. So it's the same thing if you bring it down here. So it's not about, it's, it's not a bad thing to say, okay, so thus far, we thought in the past that Nigeria was doing in terms of in terms of our position in, in, in corruption issues. And TI then came at transparency intention said, okay, two years after, things are not what it seemed to be. So it's for them now to make efforts. Say, okay, how do we fix this? It's not what well, it, for, 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 for in order to make effort, let me come to you, Barista. In order to make effort, you have to first acknowledge that there is something not quite right or not as it should be. Uh, but in this case, almost immediately there is a statement by the AGF, and he is saying that something is not right with the new index that was released. It does not correlate with the facts that is on the ground. You know, what facts would he be referring to, uh, do you think? The challenge is um, trying to bury one's head uh, into the sand like the ostrich. Now, if the um, Tra Transparency International had come out to say everything is great with Nigeria, we are not. Yes, I was going to say, some, some persons are actually saying that he might not have reacted this no, way. See, see, the funny thing that yeah. prior to 2015, I in, the APC used Transparency International Index to campaign against President Jonathan. They used it. So, they, so, they, so, 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 so why are they having an issue with that? The same people that graded Jonathan, and you're okay with it. And I'm saying, okay, a few years after, we'll feel that you, you have... You guys have the same. You guys have the same characteristics in terms of. Okay, let, let, so let's allow. We'll finish his thought. Yeah. Just don't so forget what you're saying. Look, mm. the the fact on the ground. Maybe the minister um, for justice is just living, building a castle in the air. The hospitals people are dying because drugs that we budgeted for are not made available. Or the different levels of um, medical services. The power failure is there. Look, the point is that budgets are made for these things. At the end of the day, you find that the budget didn't perform because this money has gone into people's pockets. I think what, what, what's happening now, it's like it's been across there for almost all governments. But now we are seeing from a standard categorization that is becoming worse. In one of your remarks, you said that this government is fighting corruption. I'd rather say this government is said to be fighting corruption. Whether they are fighting corruption is another day's discussion. 
Okay, let's come to you now. The, 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 some say if um, the index, you already highlighted yeah. that. Just conclude your thoughts. Well, I, I, again, for me, like, like you said, uh, one of the problems we'll have, especially with our leaders, is that uh, gov governance or leadership is not praise singing. We did not elect you to be singing for you so that you be dancing and we'll be happy with jubilating. No, well, we elected you and there's what is called performance measurement and there's a performance index and for every people will grade you. So, for example, 2015. But, but not to interrupt you again, the attorney general is saying facts on the ground. What and my question to you is that what are the facts why don't that he's referring to? He, he, if, he has, if he has a different fact, let him present it to the world. Because you can't say you have facts. See, you, attorney general, you're working for the presidency. You're a boss, you're a principal. Campaign with Transparency International Index to win an election in 2015. He used the same index to campaign for 2019 to say that I'm, I'm, I'm fighting corruption. They did it during the last election. They said they were fighting corruption. So if these same people that have given you ammunition to fight for, uh, against Jonathan to win, came back for second term and you won, I, you are telling us that what they've been saying so far is true. But now, now they've changed their mind to say, okay, look, I, we've worked closely with you guys. We've seen that there's some things that, that are still wrong here. And you're denying it. So it just it shows that for them, it's all about people to say what they want to hear. And it, it, it's a hypocrisy. It's a mockery of people that, like you said, people are dying every day because of some issues in terms of budget and the rest of them. It's not about, it's not about saying uh, president is anti-corruption or not. No. The president is not everywhere. Well, let, let's, 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 let's see if we can acknowledge something here. You, you said something when you started that in the first tenor of Buhari, there was this perception with his personality. Yeah. And that seemed to have reflected in the index yeah. that was presented. Yeah. This held for two years, right? Yeah. We're four points up. Now we're two points down. Would it maybe have something to do with the perception that he is also leaving? He doesn't have a third term to come for. Uh, that could um, account for this drop in the index. No, oh. I disagree. I would rather say that maybe he shouldn't have run for, an, for this term that is running. That means that there's a depreciation. Maybe in even that body language is not there anymore. Uh, and, and that just seems to be what it was on the table for the president. Well, it's, it, what we need to do as a nation is to take this in good faith and then in, and sit down and begin to plug and actually fight corruption. Left to me, I think there's still a whole lot that's left to be desired in this fight. I think corruption. I'll take a cue from what you just said about, you know, looking for solution. And let's move to the other parts of the report. Uh, there were some recommendations uh, in that report. One of them was the fact that the, the, it highlighted, the report said, from fraud that occurs at the highest level of government to petty bribery that blocks access to basic public services like health care and education that you mentioned, citizens are fed up with corrupt leaders and institutions. Um, the report called for a reduction, that's where I'm going, a reduction of big money in politics and inclusive decision making as one of the way of curbing uh, corruption. Do you agree and do you think this will work or we're just... I, 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 I feel it's just too much English. All right. I feel, just, I feel just too much English. Uh, for me, I think the corruption we have in Nigeria, I think I define it into we'll have a corruption of need and have a corruption of greed. A lot of people are hungry. No, but so what, what you're saying here, they're, they're, you're tracing it to uh, the fact that petty bribery, and that's, uh, that's, uh, it, huge it, money it, politics. It comes back to two things, need and greed. See, is is interwoven with the fabric of our society of who we are as a people, from the from the from the lowest level of governance. Let's say for for, for let's say a police station, a tier of police station. You go there, someone expects you to pay a bribe, to pervert justice, to the highest level where the former SGF that used to work with President Buhari stole money that was meant to, meant for IDPs. So it's not just about yeah. For us, we have an institutional problem, and the only way to do that is for people to start getting punished for corrupt practices. See, human beings don't obey law because they want to obey laws. Human beings are naturally white. So people obey law because there, there's, there's a level of punitive. punitive measures, there's a level of action that will follow. And that is why, you can, that's why sometimes people in the morning when they're going to work, they drive very, very well because they know what? Lasma will be there in the morning to watch them. <laughs> so but in the evening, when everybody knows that Lasma is tired and has gone home because the son has dealt with him, everybody starts driving like, we're going to a war. So, it does, so for me, it's, it's about, okay, what is happening on a lower level? If a police officer was caught taking bribes, if a police officer was caught perverting justice, for example, there was a report that just came out from Fisai Osambo about uh, Yaba, Yaba, the, the psychiatric hospital in, in Yaba, of how people are, people are pervert, making it difficult to people that need help can't get it. 
You have to pay before you, be, you are being treated in a hospital. So if, if reports like that come out, last time we had something about immigration, have people been sent to jail? Have people been punished? You, you, you're in the prison system. You're making, you're making life difficult for prison. So well, it, doesn't, it, it, doesn't that bring another level to the conversation? When you're talking about the citizens' responsibility, we, we keep happing on government responsibility no, it, 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 in helping to curb corruption. But what about our role? You just highlighted two scenarios. One is the situation with the traffic. When you're going in the morning, you're well behaved. You're coming back because you feel there is no authority there to control. Must we have that yes. as civilized people? Yes. Now you find that the moral will to do good also has something to do with leadership. Now when people perceive leadership as being corrupt and as being disobedient, I mean when for instance somebody that is a leader is running one way and beating traffic and not complying with traffic light, now the people now take it that that's really what should be because most of them most of them don't even get to read what's in the law and the codes they look at what the leaders say the body language you find that now when again like um, my colleague is talking about punitive um, discipline and you find that it is selective you know somebody does something gets away with it another person because it's another party does the same thing and goes in for it. it the people now just take that to be a norm. They, they, it's not, there's nothing serious about it. So we are leaders, our leaders, whether those that are there now, those that will come after them, we need to sit down and agree that we need a proper orientation for the nation that will start from leadership. The leadership must show example. And the, talking about bogus expenses um, by the uh, propositions there, you find that, look, when you have to renovate National Assembly with so much that can actually build a whole city. What are you telling the citizens? You've yeah. just given them well, more message. Well, it, than isn't, that, actually isn't that what you're worrisome? Talking. Because if you're talking about the people that will fix the system, yeah. the report also highlighted uh, a growing level of impunity when it comes to obeying the rule of law. And in recent um, months, we've seen um, uh, disobedience to court orders, people being held, even after the court has said, let them go, and some other shenanigans that uh, go around in, in, the, in the leadership that should be guiding the people. Can we fix it? Is it fixable? And if, that, if it is fixable, how do we go about it? I think, I think anything can be done if, if you put our mind to it and if you want to do it. Like you said, uh, someone said that everything rises and falls under leadership, right? For example, you're in a country where the president's daughter flies the private jet of the president to go and take pictures in Kano. All right? And that is abuse of public office, and that is abuse of public wealth. So you, you can't be asking people, you can't be asking people, the leader can't be doing things as he wants and be asking people to obey. Because like in Nigeria, we're very aspirational. We want to be like someone, we want to be like this person. So if you can't model good behavior and you're not, you're not putting that punitive measures, uh, the people that have been mentioned that have looted money, thus far, Nema, uh, Ministry of Information, Adalai Mohammed, uh, Babaji Lawa, all of them are working free. You see them at meetings, high government ranking officials, clapping, dancing, smiling. So what are you telling the guy on the street? So I, 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 I wouldn't blame them, all right? Because if leadership is setting a proper example, it, if, everything falls, if it goes from here to down. So if we can't do that as a, if we can't do that as a country, it's gonna be difficult for us. Can we fix it? Yes, but the leadership thus far, everything depends on them. And now TI, Transparency International, is telling that you guys have fought here. This, the AG that's supposed to be looking for how to bring in laws to block up the loopholes and right, has turned himself to lie Mohammed and start defending the government that you're not employed to defend. We are employed to interpret the laws and help us to adjudicate things. And you don't turn yourself to digital media spokesperson. So it doesn't make sense. All right, your final thoughts, because I'm told we're Look, out of um, time now. My, my thought is that we can fix this um, first. We will need to look at the people we put into power. That now reflects on the people. As, 20, as people are now racing towards 2023, the people need to carefully make their choice. And then leadership would have to be conscientious. Otherwise, it's not worth it. They should actually think of giving up, throwing the towel, and let somebody else do the work so that we can get a better, better image for this country, because that's what we deserve. We certainly deserve the very best. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your Welcome. thoughts so Thank far. Thank you so much. All right, we'll go on a short break. And when we return, the latest on U.S. visa restrictions is up for discussions to stay with us.